Let's run away like Bonnie and Clyde. Let us leave one behind. And to describe my feature film Timeless to a new audience, I would say it's a satire, it's an anarchistic comedy. Anarchistic not necessarily in a political sense, but in a stylistic one, meaning that it's unpredictable and it plays with genres. We have some scenes that are straight drama, we have very realistic war scenes, then we have slapstick comedy, then we have thriller sequences. Uh, so I would say it's an unpredictable comedy and a satire on many aspects of the modern world. I have always been very fascinated uh, by how quickly people's mindset can switch into a totalitarian one, independent of the ideology, just in general, how difficult it is for many people to remain truly tolerant. And in Timeless I wanted to show that issue. So I, by making a young man from 1932, right before the Third Reich was taking place, travel in time to a quasi-dystopian very near future in which there is a strange totalitarian system, I wanted to show the nature of totalitarian thought, really independent of any ideology, and I thought it's best to tell this story not in a preachy way, but in a very light way, to make people laugh, to make people enjoy it, and then later realize what's actually happened there. So we have scenes you laugh about it, it's very funny, then later when you think about it, you realize, wait a second, there's really tough stuff going on there. And especially the ending of Timeless, I wanted to make very brutal, to suddenly make laughter stop and make people realize the true nature of what totalitarian systems lead to, violence and war. So that's what prompted me to do it. You know, I was actually pretty fortunate because there were no real difficulties when making Timeless. I know this sounds like some kind of marketing PR thing to say, but it's actually the truth. It was a very straightforward and very pleasant process. The biggest challenge was that there were you know, a mix of professional actors and um, friends of mine who do it in their free time and to coordinate everybody so that they have time. That was actually relatively difficult, um, but it worked quite well. You know, I produced the film myself, so <laughs> this was also my task. And actually the most interesting thing to me was how the film grew and grew and grew as I made it. The sequence where we smash a car in the final movie was actually just a dialogue in the screenplay and I wrote a script myself so three or four weeks before I shot it I thought wait this isn't that interesting let's make the dialogue shorter and let's destroy a car during the scene so uh, that was pretty nice and the ending the World War II scene with the tank was originally uh, just a few German soldiers in a bunker. Then I found uh, Mr. Jörn Bindig in Saxony who owns a tank actually, a World War II tank that's deactivated but still it can drive, it looks very real. So suddenly we shot the ending scene as a World War II tank battle, which was pretty exciting. So really it was challenging but not no particular difficulties, I'm lucky to say. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the compliment. Well, I was very very lucky with the cast and I'm very happy about the cast also because the professional actors you see in the film are also friends of mine whose work I admire and I wanted to collaborate with them since a long time. Well, and the approach to directing actors, I myself haven't thought about it a lot consciously but I heard from others that my approach is very result-oriented, meaning I tell actors what their role should look like, but I leave it to them, I give them freedom to develop the background of the character themselves. You know, for example, Aline, who's playing uh, Lizzie in the film, when I met with her, I told her a few things. You know, Lizzie just wants success very quickly, she's very ambitious, 
And then Aline came up with this whole background story and she checked with me if I'm okay with that and we discussed it and I really liked it how she developed the character. So yeah, I would say it's a very result-oriented style and how I direct myself, that's a really good question. I just behave the way I feel like in, in sequence. There was one very funny scene where my character is very angry and ranting, so the people behind the camera they're friends of mine and I improvised that rant, so we had this blast. They were sitting behind the camera and told me things to make me angry, but in a funny way. So I went with it and just got into the mood to improvise as a character. So yeah, that's my approach to directing. To get the movie out to an audience, my approach so far has been to show it at festivals, you know, just to show it around and to get audience reactions directly. And after the festivals, I'll look for the distribution. So at the moment it's still the festival run and it's been a blast so far. The film had its world premiere in Paris, at Paris Independent Film Festival in November 2016. And it was just a great time. You know, Helmut Berger is very popular in Paris, in France. And and then the film had its German premiere at Berlin Independent Film Festival in February and right after that it screened two times in Los Angeles, in downtown LA, in North Hollywood. And it was just a wonderful time and I saw very different audiences respond to the film. And I saw how different people's views on the film were. Some saw it as a very funny comedy, which was great. Some saw it as a very thought-provoking, radical, drama that uses comedy as a way to mm, kind of alienate the viewers from the story a little bit. I'm not using the right word, but you get what I mean. So it's just very, very interesting to see all these different viewpoints of different audience members of, on the film. And the film won quite some awards at festivals, so <laughs> that was also nice. And I'm looking forward to distribution and to showing it at more festivals. It's been a really good time and audiences really liked it so far. I would say in general I'm mostly influenced by filmmakers who use the medium film to the fullest extent possible. I hear some people say that filmmaking is primarily storytelling, but I think that there's so much more to it. The cinematography, the editing, the use of music, it can all bring something to it if it's just very original, if it does more than simply support the storytelling, if it actively does something in it. Let's say people I personally met and you know exchanged artistic views with would be Hugo Niebeling first of and foremost. He's a German, he used to be a German director, he died last year unfortunately and we were very close, we talked very very often about films, about editing, he liked my editing style, I liked his, so we were very 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 close. Then there's Tinto Brass, whose 1960s experimental filmmaking influenced me a lot in the way he's using cinematography, editing and switching between genres, giving it all a very surrealistic touch. Advice to filmmakers? That's a really good question because I can only speak from myself, so I could give you advice how to be like I am, but that's not the only way to be, so I mean, I would say some general advice. Let's say to filmmakers who start making films in 2017 would be to just do it. You know, many filmmakers I find put a lot of thought into everything, pre-plan a lot and then it all seems so overwhelming and so difficult that they won't tackle a feature film, for example. They say, oh, I cannot produce such a long film, it's so much work. I would say go step by step by step. So when I produce my feature films so far, to me it feels like producing one sh short film after the other. Every sequence, just to me, feeling-wise, is like a short film. I organize it, I do the next. I just look at the immediate next step and sooner than you think you're done and you have the whole film. So maybe that's my advice. Just, just do it, just start it and then it will work out. It's a good question, what would I say if I were a dolphin? You know, dolphins, they are very intelligent mammals and you know, a lot of 
observations show that they're very self-aware. So it's a very tough question what I would say if I were a dolphin. I cannot answer it quickly. I have to really think myself into the mind system of this marine mammal. So after careful deliberation... Uh, is that the battery blinking there?